Hello YouTube Infinite Magic Ray community, Gandalf here. Um, we have the brand new hero, uh, Jue Wu, that has uh, joined the game here. Um, in terms of you know how strong this hero is, I would say he will fall into more of your PvP camp, less so on your PvE side of things. Yes, he has a very strong single target, um, but because the, the nature of his second skill being more focused on control, turn meter reduction, um, it won't, I mean, it will help you with wave clearing, getting through the waves um, by putting a little bit of CC on the enemy in a very consistent manner. Um, you know, you're all four turn cooldown with a big nuke. Your, your first, your basic attack is decent, 200% plus um extra 100 percent um 200 percent on internal injury damage directly um he does not even apply an in internal injury debuff unfortunately so really it's just direct so so the he's losing out on the opportunity uh of um leaving the dot and doing the dot damage over the next few turns right so um how strong is he in pvp um not in your god tier or your your, your s tier category so i wouldn't recommend you use your miracle summons on him so for those of you who are just looking for the answer of is he you know worth my summons or not this coming weekend um i will say for the typical average player he is not um however if you're a whale kraken or you just like this character go for it that's it's your choice um, let's go into his specific skill set about where his strong suits are um, and what he can be good for. Uh, currently, based on you know his kit, he will be you know kind of like in your you know A plus S range um, compared to the other heroes that I posted on my tier list. Um, he has very high potential uh, in terms of stripping the buff off all the enemy target, doing a very strong single target nuke. Okay, well, this is embarrassing. Got frozen. Um, and his second skill, basically, um, at exclusive one, um, you can pretty much set him up so that he can, you know, land Horrify without worrying about the enemy blocking it uh, with effective res. Uh, for the most part, he doesn't have to have a lot of effective hit to guarantee a 100% hit rate. Um, there's He just needs to have higher attack than them. And there's also really... Uh, effective hit res check that we have to do um, but the formula is a lot more favorable like basically he has like almost like a hit in 100 like plus 100 effective hit on it you can think of it like that and we'll, we'll go through the uh, details with examples shortly after but basically horrify the entire enemy for two turns not just one turn for two turns okay um, two turns of horrify is that strong I think it's strong. I mean, I think they're they're experimenting with different kind of things. Like the other thing we saw with um, was Nirid, right? Nirid had the ability of landing suffocate, uh, and um, what did Nirid do again? It was like suffocate, and basically they can't they can't use basic attack, and they can't use um, like they have a fifty percent chance of moving, right? So they were drowned and suffocated at the same time. Um, so then they have like a 25% chance of not acting. They're playing around with other debuffs than, than, than stuns or freezes. Um, Horrify is under use right now. Like nobody uses Horrify in PvP. But could this be broken enough to use in PvP? Because, for example, he actually has a really good place, right? Like I, I know he sa I said he isn't going to make it into the PvP meta right now. Doesn't mean he won't in the future. And it really depends on... Um, I guess a couple of things is, do we see him in the tanky meta tanky team? Because today a lot of heroes, a lot of people put anti-freeze or, um, and he in theory, because he can sing, he can he he basically takes out the need of having Ben Austin and another damage dealer for your team because he is the Ben Austin and the damage dealing at the same time, right? He's going to strip and nuke a target. Uh, 
Luna actually does that too. So so let's bring a couple of heroes for comparison, right? And, and talk about what is what the lineup actually looks like here. And then we'll we'll showcase this. We're going to showcase this damage as well, and I'll explain the mechanics. So I'll try to do this all relatively quickly. I don't want to make this video too long here. Um, so let's let's go into. Or I think Lunar's red, right? Um, let's compare that. Just let's just bring out a. Let's maybe do the damage test first. Okay, let's let's do the damage test first, um, and then damage comparison first. I'll put in Moshi as well, just because we've seen a lot of Moshi's in my video recently for Sega City comparison. Um, and let's talk about you know their role a little bit. Okay, so. And on the enemy side, uh, I'm going to put uh, something like like a hen and a panda to, to just kind of, because we commonly see, the, see these enemies, right? Um, really for the effective rest mechanic explanation, okay? So, uh, first of all, okay, um, I'm pretty sure Luna, what it does is, okay, so Luna... Ignore shield, uh, immortality, and damage immunity. Okay, so so I can basically hit through stuff, right? Like, boom. Okay, but if you look at the multiplier from Luna, not that impressive. Okay, F like what? Four hundred percent. That's it. Okay, on comparable stats, right? Like. These are these guys are like a thousand, a thousand two hundred. Okay, like it's gonna scale. Okay, don't worry about it. Like there's very little mastery here. Okay, let's let's look let's look at um you know what Jin Wu would do, right? We're gonna strip all of that and bam. Okay, just just on the same level of scaling, you can kind of see that new Luna was never designed to be like I'm gonna single target, cling kill teams, right? This guy is. He's going to strip targets and nuke them down. Okay, now when it comes to Mo Moshi, you know, like when I said Moshi was in PvP, like, like yeah, you can use her as a toy. Like, it's just like, I think when um, Zora came out, like, uh, BTN True and I were, like, we're messing around messaging, and he messaged me a couple times showing, like, Zora just one-shotting entire teams. Yeah, because people have the stats to do it, right? Like, yeah, like, like yes, Moshi can do this, but um Moshi's not gonna hit as hard as um as uh uh as Jin Wu here because Jin Wu is just gonna strip and all of that. Yes, Moshi has two sets of turns, but think about often the times where like Moshi really needs a proper team setup. Like when I showcased her, I paired her with like Ristler and a lot of other heroes. Jin Wu is gonna do things on his own. Like he's gonna sit with your tanky team. Uh, put him, pr protect him, put him on a slow team, put him on a tanky setup, and you can just watch him nuke down targets one at a time. And he's going to help you stall because he's going to be able to go through all of the, you know, the panda immunity BS uh, or high effective rest BS that you deal with, or like from Nordak or from panda. Everybody's protected. Well, you don't have to strip them. You still can horrify them. When you horrify them for two turns here, too is you don't have to worry about you they could be wasting their cooldowns they won't be attacking right like yes it's not consistent it's not reliable but when you are using it on a very slow tanky team eh, you know we'll have to wait and see right I, I feel like on on defense it will work because people usually want to attack with 100 percent confidence and if they get screwed over by rng they don't they don't like it but when you're attacking you want to have 100 percent confidence so in a way i feel like you know He's in a very good spot. Am I going to pull him? No, because simply I'm out of Miracle Runes and Gems. But should you pull for them, it depends on where are you in your PvP journey. Like, if you really have all the other heroes and you need a new toy and you want to think about maybe pushing and you happen to have that room, starting to think about building that second tanky team, he might be able to fit in that uh, really well. So, anyways... Um, I think you guys probably, like I said, let's let's just do a quick damage comparison in terms of the multiplier. So you get a real sense of it, right? Let's put these guys on the same multiplier. So we'll do 15, uh, we'll just do 1500. Okay, with, with let's just say 100 mastery. 
I think the crit rate and crit damage is about the same between the two, right? It's all defaulted. So we'll do 1500 with like 100 mastery, okay? Just, just like these are not real stats, but I just want to put them on the same basis so that you can just see the damage difference. Okay, um, we're going to do 100. We'll put both of these uh, at full HP again. Um, we're just going to put him at like, uh, like, I don't know, 800k HP. Okay, just so that we can get a get a baseline comparison here going. Okay. So Luna is going to do her thing, whatever. Um, okay, so let's um, let's strip one strip. Okay, sorry, my bad. Um, we should have made tank, um, Panda a little bit more health. Uh, whoopsies uh, max HP let's just do max HP reset current setting and we're just gonna hit make both hit onto panda okay um, yeah okay whatever um, okay uh, single target onto panda just so that we get a good sense of you know the difference here okay so that was 300k right let's let's talk about Moshi Moshi second skill Okay, the first one doesn't count because, well, she's going to get an extra turn, but. Just want to make sure the stats are right. Um, yeah, 15k, 100 mastery. Moshi did. Okay, Moshi, I think, hit 200k on Panda there. But let's see how much this one does. Um. Just to put things, she was at 450, so they that hit is the same as Moshi's hit. So yeah, Moshi is going to be the more of the, the the deleting one, but this guy is going to be able to strip the enemy's target and get rid of all the immunity damage, immunity, get rid of all the buff. Moshi, you really need to have that first turn set up. If she can't kill everybody in the first round, she's kind of not going to be able to do much while your team gets wiped out. Um, especially if they have a Nordak Panda and they set up the immunity. You don't get the kill, you're not going to combo, you're good as dead. Um, this guy is different because he's going to be able to... Okay, he's going to be able to land multiple hits, okay, um, after he strips them. So a total of five stages, five stage hit. Um, He's going to have no problem, okay, nuking down targets. Okay, so let's explain the second piece here. Um, I'm just going to get rid of these two hero. Uh, explaining what I mean by um, he doesn't have to deal with effective res very much. In normal circumstance, circumstances, if you look at his effective hit of 42 against uh, the enemy around like 111, um, you are not going to get that effective rest through okay um however okay however um, usually if you want to have a hundred percent if like effective chance of landing your debuff basically what you need is your this number here 60 and whatever percentage bonus you have okay so usually it's like this means 100% base plus your effective hit minus their effective res has to be greater than 100 for like guaranteed landing your CC. So in this case, if they have like 110 effective res, you will need you will need basically the same number as that or higher to kind of land it very consistently. In this case, all right. I just need as long as 60, okay, 60, the chance to inflict horrify, plus whatever my effective hit is, greater than their effective resistance, I'm going to land it 100% of the time. So there are 11, 
42. So I just need my effective hit at 52. Okay, 52. Uh, oops. And we should be um, landing the... Okay, why did the effective rest change again? Okay, we're... To, to make it simple, okay, we're going to make her effective res at 100. I, I hope it doesn't go to 150 because Panda does the thing. Okay, okay, okay. So Panda is giving the effective, the plus one effective res because, right, okay. All right, okay, let's let's do a couple of things first. Okay, Panda, we're going to give Panda max effective resistance just so that, you know, um, hang on, we're going to start it off at, let's just say, okay, we're going to get, we're going to give it, you know, a hundred. Okay. Um, that means I will need 90 effective hit, which is kind of high. I mean, but Hey, normally, okay. Even if you had 90 effective hit, you're not going to be able to do the following, okay? You're going to be able to hit it through that stuff, okay? Where it's 100% chance blocks. Now, if we're just short by a little bit, say 89, I think I'm not going to be able to hit it because the enemy is at 200 effective res okay this is 200 effective res i only need i only need a 90 okay to get through that pretty sure now you see how it's not going through and it won't go through 100 percent of the time okay it's not going to go through 100 percent of the time just just watch okay every time it's not going to work okay i'm not even going to be able to effectively res it at all like even if there was no buff because at this point, uh, when I actually check my chance of hitting, um, eighty-nine plus sixty is not okay. Oh, right, it's left at one fifty. Like, yeah, like at one fifty, it's it's not enough, right? Because it's one forty-nine. The effective res is still less than that. However. I just need to match that effective hit to 90 or not like 90, 90, 90.1, whatever it is going forward. I'm going to land that effective res every time. Okay. I'm not going to land it right now because it's 200 because of that, um, that buff there. Right. But the moment when the panda buff falls off, we're just going to wait a couple of turns here. Ah, just going to beat up the panda there. Okay, the buff should fall off now. Okay, and the enemy should be at 150 effective res, right? And we're going to land it. Okay, 90.1. Okay, 90.1. Where is it? 90 point. Okay, we just put 91. Okay, 91. There. Okay, to make life simple. We should start hitting... I do have I do have 91 effective hit. The enemy is at 150 plus 60 ish. ish. Yeah, it's landing right. And it should land every time. Okay, let, let's just see, right? Like, like let's let's just get a good sense of of the math here. I'm pretty sure, okay. Um, okay, so it's cleansed. Okay, it's gone. Yeah, right. Like, first of all, you notice it's already going through that. Okay, let's just do it one more time. Okay, Panda, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Okay.
still seem it's just doesn't seem okay they didn't seem like consistent but in the grand scheme of things right if you think about how big of a gap on, on this it is already like you are drastic drastically below sorry this is still at 200 percent um you're, you're landing this thing pretty consistently pretty sure like i think it might be just rounding like i i don't think anybody okay like has gotten this fully tested out um Edit attribute. Let's just put myself at full HP again. Maybe I shouldn't put so much health on Henla because she's hitting me too hard. Okay. Um, we're off. Okay. Okay, it's pretty consistent. Okay. Normally, okay, if you have another hero that that has you know that level of he basically has the highest, okay, think about the highest possible uh, effective hit, like, here, look, let, let's put, put another hero trying to CC here, all right, let's, I think Quinlan's a great example of someone who has, I think at exclusive three, 100% chance to freeze, okay, um, what, what did I press, okay, um, Gonna put Quinlan in here. Enemy team again, same setup. We're gonna put to make things simple. I, I think we kind of already showed the fact that um, you know we're gonna be hitting through those effect res block, which makes it really helpful. Okay, for him um, when it comes to going against Panda teams, right? And to be on that slow team, to strip targets, kill them one at a time, I think he can fit into the meta that way. Um, let's edit at attribute. Let's put the enemy at just 100%, 100 percent, 100 and uh, okay, 100 percent effective res. Okay, just to make calculation easier. So then for me, I only need like, okay, 42 is perfect because for just I need 40 plus 60 greater than that number, right? Now for Quinlan though, at the same effective hit, okay, Quinlan's not going to be, okay, let's make Quinn just a little bit slower too or, or make the enemy just faster. So, so Quinlan's going to put a dot on the enemy, okay? But Quinlan's not going to be able to land the CC consistently, but we are going to horrify. Okay, at 41 effective hit, you're resisting most of the time, okay? Even though, okay, Quinlan, 70% chance to freeze. Okay, so you know what? Let's just give Quinlan the benefit of doubt, okay? Because you're at... You're at 30% less, so let's just give Quinlan 70 extra effective hit. But even with 70 effective hit, okay, um, we're going to land Horrify every single time, okay? Quinlan here, okay, with a chance to freeze, pretty sure for both, right? It's a 60% chance to... F uh, okay, there's a 50% chance... Okay, if the target's, okay, 80%. Okay, that's already really good. Okay, 80%. Are we going to freeze? Yeah, we froze. Um, like, we can barely get consistent dots on the target. Okay, not to mention, not to mention, like, freezing, okay? Like, like, like just, let's just compare the effectiveness of the stat here, okay? We are... We are 42 effective hit over here, Quinlan. We are going to put Quinlan at 72. The enemy is at 100% effective res. Okay, I'm going to horrify every single time.
I don't want to talk about it anymore. Something's wrong with the math here. I am. I'm very upset about this. Is it because... Oh, is it because the attack is not there? Okay. For, 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 for the... For my sanity, okay? For my sanity. Maybe, maybe the formula is mo the chance is apply the, the effective hit bonus there. Like I've seen multiple variation of the formula. Okay, um, sometimes people tell me it's additive. Sometimes it's multiplicative. It is multiplicative, then it needs the 42 is not enough because it's like 0 0.6 times 1.42. That's like 84. Yeah. So, so he's still missing a little bit. Um, If it's multiplicative, and the extra chance is considered as added into effective hit, I think 50 should be enough. Okay, let's put every back, everybody back. Okay. With a lot less effective hit, okay? Um, should be consistent, okay? Uh, and, and, you know, Quinlan's having a hard time, real hard time, even though with a lot more effective hit to even, okay, we got the dot on there. Can we actually freeze? I'm going to horrify every single time. Okay, I am I got the dot on there. Okay, horrify. It's going to say horrify. It's like every single time, right? The thing here is, there, there is, it's so consistent. Okay, it's such a consistent landing of a CC. And the fact that it goes through um, block res makes this CC decent, even though it's horrified. Like, it's, it's not guaranteed stopping them from moving but it's very consistent right and it doesn't really take a lot of effective hit compare against you know what you actually have to cc on are you going to be able to cc pandas no are you going to be able to cc henle with just 42 no but if you get him to like 100 percent effective hit even if the enemy has like 200 percent like let, let's just show it right like like if he's at Oh, I don't know. Like, I think getting to 100 effective res nowadays, just from subs alone, is really easy. Okay? Uh, and he's still going to hit really hard. The enemy could be at... You know, your handler could be running at 200 effective res. Okay? And I don't think that's going to work, because pretty sure he's not going to... That's, that's a bit too much, right? Pretty sure. Um, to land on it, I think we need like a hundred and um, one hundred and forty. Okay, so are you gonna be CCing Hanlas? Okay, maybe maybe not so much, but you're gonna be CCing like without giving up damage, right? Like without giving up damage is what I mean. Um, <sighs> oh, this is a tough call. Um, well, what the verdict is um, in terms of the CC department, right? Like a 200, you're not going to CC him. You're not, but but you're not like you bring in anybody, okay? You're going to need a lot of work. Like nobody's going to be CC a 200 effective res with just this little effective hit. But if we put both, okay, let's put both at. 141 okay um and, and your Quin, quinlan you know you know what like for quinlan let's put it at one let's put both at 150 and let's just compare how if how frequently we're, we're landing our cc here okay for for uh f we're going to be landing this pretty consistently i guess for both then Uh, devs, we got, we got to you, you, you got to fix this. Okay. This is, doesn't, this doesn't fulfill your, your skill description. This is really frustrating. Um, because it says here, right. It cannot be blocked by enemy for those whose attack are lower than self. So this, does that just mean it goes through the effective block then? Like, cause I don't, I don't feel like it's changing the formula. <laughs> 
very much, to be honest. It's not changing, changing the effective hit res formula here whatsoever. So it's not like it doesn't go through that check. It just means it can't be blocked. And it doesn't mean, like, but if they have base immunity, like the hero itself can't be CC'd, like Panda, you won't CC it. But if you have effective res block up, I guess you still can CC it. So in, in, in many circumstances, it's still useful. You're going on a... Okay, let's let's wrap up this video. It's been like 30 minutes long, okay? Um, uh, let's go with our, you know, favorites. Oh, I don't have it. I, I don't have it set up here. Um, uh, let's just quickly do replace these heroes with like the, the usual suspects, okay? Uh, we're, and we're just going to run an auto and see what we observe, okay? Uh, we're going to put this. We're going to put... Lydia, um, and then we'll put a hang in here. Where's Santa? Santa is back here somewhere, and then let's just put in a hang up, okay. This is like your 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 tanky ass team that everybody kind of don't like to deal with. Um, basically, the idea is Henga takes such a beating that you will you will die from just Henga eventually, and Lydia is going to do the thing. So in this case, instead of using a Henga, um, we're going to run uh, a Drie Wu as the alternative and see what's going to happen. My my instinct is the Drewu team will still get the ass kicked um, just because you can't compete against limited. But if you don't have a Hengue, I feel like, you know, for a long period of time, like when we first had trouble with Lydia, we used Ben Austin quite a bit um, to, to lock down one target with the effect of res, with like the buff block. And, and we ended up using it to kill the enemy um, here I feel like Nordak of course Nordak it's also another yellow all oh, right all the mythics are at the beginning what am I thinking okay um, and just want to make sure Jim Wu has enough stats on him oh yeah because I put him in the nor uh, edit Let's just edit his stats a little bit. Okay, well, given how tanky everyone is, he's just going to be a standard 500k, 500 with, oh, I don't know. We're going to put him a 200 mastery. Okay, we see this too often. That's all we're going to do it. Effective hit, we're going to leave him at 75. And let's just battle it out. And, and let's observe what happens, okay? Um... Okay, yeah, they're they're gonna do their thing. We strip. We didn't make the kill because there's not enough tankiness. It's fine. They have all their thing. Okay, if Jim will see Jim Jim was already started, right? Like you can see through that even at 75, where where we are we are effectively landing the CC, even though they have a panda buff, they have their Santa buff. We got most of them CC'd already. But it's a 50% chance of stalling them. Okay, so from a from a slow tanky team, this is where he will fit. Um, the question though is, he going to do enough damage? And I mean, the first shot was taken on the panda, so that was not enough. Um, I hope we're not here for the whole night, guys. Um, Um, he's definitely not, I think both teams are just too tanky here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think the Lydia in both teams was a horrible idea because, actually, you know what, what's really nice is what you noticed here is, um, when he made the attack there, I don't think the the buffs were stolen. 
We're just going to slow down a little bit, just 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 so that we check, right? Because he's full of buffs. Normally, the general problem we run into is when we fight um, Lydia teams is they they keep stealing the buffs back and forth. Okay. Uh, okay, it's his turn. We are going to attack Nordak here, and let's see um, if we end up leaving a pass a buff to Nordak when we're done. We don't. Do we? Or is this shield got stolen over? I can't tell. I think the shield got stolen over, right? Uh, uh, well, just do it one more time, just to be sure, because I can't tell if it was a shield that got passed over. Um, Want to confirm in terms of the, the turn order of how things happen. Okay, so we know for sure he has a shield on him. Well, after he attacks the target, um, like all we have is shields, right, and a speed up. So, okay, let's uh, let's let's note the size of panda shield. Um, we'll, we'll do it on Nordak again, so it's a little bit more clear. We stripped everything away, and then he stole the shield. Yeah, he stole the shield. So yeah, you're not going to be able to deal with the annoying Lydia problem with him. But that's, again, still after doing all the damage, right? So if he does do enough damage, however, okay, which in this case, I think, you know, we haven't put enough stuff on him. Uh, up to 50% can be used to increase internal injury. I was honestly hoping the damage to be a little bit higher. Well, again, this is a very tanky setup. How much health did I put on that Nordak? Okay, maybe that's a little bit excessive for trying to one-shot something like that. But, I mean, with the Kraken stats out there, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Um, I feel like probably went overboard on his analysis a little bit. I do feel like his kid has potential. Um, you do need a lot of stats to pull it off. I mean, there's a lot of things that can boost stats nowadays, right? Like the like having 50k attack and 200 mastery is nothing. Um, he's going to benefit from um, echoes that benefit from multi-hit, like the one they think for. Like he's going to benefit from skill damage. There's a lot of aura. So yeah, if you're if you are a late game player and you can afford to build him at exclusive three. I mean, he's going to have high potential on a slow team, right? It doesn't have to be this level of tankiness, but you saw, like, what he's able to do. Basically, he's kind of like your Ben Austin. Like, if we replace one of the Ben Austin, the problem is, well, if you use Ben Austin, you kind of rely on the damage from the other four heroes, and it's just not as much as him just doing one big ultimate, right? Like, like the reason, like, yeah, they're surviving it. Again, it has the same weakness, same weakness, um, Han Le is just, uh, is just so strong against single target nukers because you kind of have to kill them and Han Le at the same time. Um, this Horrify is going to give you the other ha upper hand though, like to be able to CC your targets pretty consistently like that. Like maybe if you take out, like it could afford you to take out another hero because you're stalling a little bit. Um, and allow you to then put in two DPS on, on a slow team like that. So anyways, hopefully this is good food for thought, helps you with your decision, and show, showing case the full skill kit and help you understand what Jinwoo can do. I'll catch you next time. Gandalf out.